I'm not an architect, but I've done a lot to talk about architecture because architecture is the, the palette on which our city's history mm -hmm. is painted in a permanent way so that as we drive down the streets, we can see the buildings that make up our history. And that's how I got interested years ago in writing a book about Jacksonville's history. And I guess the book that I'm best known for is Jacksonville's Architectural Heritage. We started out uh, the Landmarks Commission of Jacksonville to write a pamphlet. And some 12 years later, I had written this 400-page book on Jacksonville's architecture with the collaboration of hundreds of community citizens. And this book is said to be on more coffee tables than any other book in Florida. And it certainly is uh, the most uh, wonderful project I ever had the pleasure to work on. Jacksonville has uh, so much architectural her heritage to be proud of, and yet because we're sandwiched between Savannah and St. Augustine, many people have never fully appreciated what a wonderful diversity uh, and texture of architecture we have, and so this book set out to do that. There are many buildings that are chronicled in the book that are now gone, such as the old city hall that Clutho did. When this building was torn down in the 1960s to build the new Hayden Burns Library, People thought it was old-fashioned and out of, out of fashion and uh, no longer served a purpose. But if we had this building back today, it would be one of Jacksonville's most treasured landmarks. And other buildings that have been torn down, such as the old Windsor Hotel facing on Hemming Park, which rebuilt after the fire, as was the county courthouse, these buildings have been torn down uh, needlessly in some cases because if these were still there today, they would be essentially the most valuable part of our skyline. But they're gone making it all the more important to preserve those buildings that we still have. And every time I drive down the streets and see another historic building needlessly come down that could have been saved, it just makes me want to uh, work even harder to wake our city up to saving not just individual buildings, but neighborhoods and streets and blocks that make up the fabric of our life that gives Jacksonville a texture unlike any other city. Although buildings have been torn down, many, many buildings have been saved, and I'd like to celebrate some of those. Uh, these are buildings featured in the book Jacksonville's Architectural Heritage, and that the Jacksonville Historical Society has played some role in saving over the years. One of the greatest of the buildings in downtown Jacksonville is the Florida Theater, a magnificent atmospheric movie theater that is now a performing arts center and office building that is truly uh, the heart of downtown's cultural life. I'm very proud to have help say that, as well as the old train station, built in 1919. This was one of the largest train stations in the South. Hundreds and hundreds of trains came through Jacksonville every day. I think I've saved this building three times. <laughs> <laughs> it was destined, there was a, a, a JTA bus barn was going to be built right behind it, which would have forever prevented this building from being used for anything more than a dust catcher. And we'd, we prevented that from happening and then staged a big party back in the, uh, early 1980s called the Station Celebration, where the city rallied and celebrated this building, and it later was purchased by private owners and turned into the city's convention center, a wonderful part of Jacksonville's landmark. I mentioned that the St. James Building, the for former Cohen Brothers Department Store, has been saved by the city of Jacksonville and now serves as our city hall, truly one of the most beautiful city halls in America and the capstone of the preservation movement in Jacksonville to save a building that is so big, so difficult, so challenging, and yet our city stepped up to the plate and saved that building. The Jacksonville Historical Society has also put its energy where its mouth is, and we have saved two buildings. On the right you see Old St. Andrew's Church, a magnificent 1880s uh, Gothic cathedral, Episcopal cathedral, that survived the Great Fire and is now the Jacksonville Historical Society's headquarters, magnificently restored. Next to it is the Merrill House, which was moved from an adjacent property, another 1880s building that is one of the old Victorian uh, buildings that is now part of the Jacksonville Historical Society complex, and those buildings are available for renting for weddings and other meetings. Here you see a nice close-up of the Merrill House, one of our greatest recent restoration projects that will be occasionally open for tours mm -hmm. uh, by the public. Another great project that was uh, recently restored is Henry Clutho's apartments on Main Street. This very wonderful abstract uh, building was terribly burned. It almost totally gutted uh, back about 20 years ago and through the efforts of Springfield Preservation and Fresh Ministries this dilapidated building was now beautifully restored into the Clutho apartments and is one of the glistening jewels on Main Street in Jacksonville. Other buildings that have been are, are capable of being restored are the trio on the corner of Laura and Forsyth Street the Barnett Bank building, it's uh, been empty for a long time. 
the old silent movie studios in Arlington and the Hayden Burns Library, which took the place of the old city hall that got turned down and now in turn it is a threatened and endangered building that we hope can be saved. And our hope in saving Jacksonville's architecture is not just to save landmark giant buildings, but houses, to save uh, wonderful homes and neighborhoods, and to keep them intact as part of our city's great architectural heritage so that 100 years from now, people will look back and marvel at the heritage that we have saved for them. Well, you've certainly played a large, large part in that, and certainly in the, the awareness. And your books make people aware every day. In fact, uh, with Jacksonville's Architectural Heritage, that book, I believe, Wayne, correct me if I'm wrong, it's the best-selling local history book uh, in history. We know that for a fact. Um, well, it sold over 20,000 copies and still going strong, and we've updated the book, and uh, hopefully those who don't have it will have this as part of their library because it does tell a story about Jacksonville through its buildings the way I think no, building, no, no book ever has. And all the books we've talked about today are either available from the local bookstores or from the Jacksonville Historical Society. So they're out there, or in the library. If people right. don't want to buy them, our public libraries keep all of them. Well, ho hopefully books. your viewers will go to our website, www.jackshistory.com, and uh, for our, uh, there's always lots of information about Jacksonville history, mm -hmm. what's going on in preservation efforts. And we also have an online bookstore where these books can be purchased on our internet site, www.jackshistory.com. That's right, www.jackshistory.com. And one of the things um, as well, it, pretty soon we're going to have much ado about books as a, a major feature of our city. It is annually. Uh, this year it is May, May 13th, 13th at, the, uh, at the downtown Hyatt Hotel. That's Oh, yeah, they've moved locations this year. And, of course, books are a mainstay. Local history books will be uh, clearly center stage there. Right. And we'll have all of our, all the Historical Society books will be on sale at Much Ado About Books, and we'll be doing some panels and presentations. And we urge your viewers to go to Much Ado About Books to celebrate uh, the authors who are coming to this city to talk about books as well as not just history, but all mm -hmm. kinds of books. That's right, and I know you've been a panelist multiple years on that, and it's a great place to learn about our city's history oftentimes, and, and of course, a lot of fun, so I encourage everybody to, to make that. Um, as far as Jacksonville history goes, uh, Wayne, what do you see as some of your upcoming projects? Do you have any in the works? If, if I said I was going to write another book anytime soon, I think my wife would have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I am always pursuing other things. There are many new photographs we've received since the Jacksonville Family mm -hmm. album came out. So maybe someday we'll do another book, a, a second edition of new, book, uh, new photos that we've acquired. And the Jacksonville Historical Society's archives still has thousands of photographs right. that have never been published and we are in the process of reviewing those and adding to the collection and if your viewers have photographs they would like to contribute to the Jacksonville Historical Society perhaps they'll be seen in a future book. And, and I will ask for that. Uh, we keep archives. People should know. In fact, if people want to get copies, most of these photos uh, are available to the public uh, and, and they can obtain copies. Copies can be blown up. There are a few that are copyrighted and that would not be possible, but most are available and they're available through the Jacksonville Historical Society Archives. Just one more thing that the Society does. Um, it's been a pleasure, as usual, to have you on the show. Uh, I want to let people know not only can they get these books through us and at local bookstores, they can actually now, Wayne, see that Merrill House by contacting the Jacksonville Historical Society. Beginning in May, we plan to keep it open uh, on Thursdays for the, for the public. So a lot is happening. And again, thank you for pointing out the archives are a great repository for these pictures. They just need to go on www.jackshistory.com. Uh, and for those who have yeah. not seen the Merrill House, the Merrill House is, in my opinion, one of the greatest house restorations ever done in Jacksonville. It is incredible Thank and you, you're you deserve Thank a lot you. of credit for your hard work on that. Thank you. Uh, please, you're welcome as our guest anytime. A favorite guest of ours, Wayne Wood, Dr. Wayne Wood. Uh, thanks for joining us today on uh, <laughs> the Jacksonville History Show and join us again where you learn about our city's revered history. I'm Emily Liska. Thanks for being with us. Bye for now.